and we'll get it started. Hello everyone, my name is Corey Young. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions here at Hennepin Technical College. I want to welcome everyone back to another edition of uh, Live in the Lab. Um, so if you've been around for this month and have been able to attend the other events, um, super excited and super um, thankful for you all to attend and really to share the information that you're learning in these events to your students or people in your life that are interested in going to school or thinking about technical college, we really appreciate it. This entire um, theme of CTE month and career technical education was to showcase awareness about how great uh, technical education is. And um, I think this particular week is gonna be a very special one because we're showcasing um, that not all technical education looks exactly the same. Uh, for for some of you, you were able to witness our transportation and our automation robotics and our video production, but not many people realize that we have a business program on our campus and that still qualifies as technical education. Um, a lot of times I think some programs will get mixed up and people are like, okay, what does Hidden Tech offer? What, what can you find at a technical institution? Um, and you can see it's a lot of opportunity available. Um, so with that, you're gonna learn about um, just our, our business program opportunities and you're going to hear from our amazing faculty, but you're also going to be able to um, hear from an, a special entrepreneur um, and I'll let her introduce herself later on uh, when it's her time to speak, but um, without any further ado, I'll let uh, Chris and Jeff take it away. Great. Well, thanks, Corey. Uh, my name is Jeff Peterson, and I'm here with my colleague, Chris Reinecke, and we're two of the faculty members that cover the business program at Hennepin Technical College. Uh, one of the unique things about a technical college is that we draw our faculty from industry, and if you've been to some of these other um, live in the labs, you've seen that with, with some of the other programs. Well, business is the same, and so I thought we'd just maybe take a minute and talk a little bit about our background. Um, I came to Hennepin Tech after a 30-year career in the aerospace industry um, with, with uh, Honeywell. I, I, had, I was based in Albuquerque, New Mexico for a while in Phoenix and Washington, D.C., and then finally here uh, in Minnesota. Most of my career is in sales and marketing. That's kind of my passion, and that, that's where I spent most of my time uh, with Honeywell. And my final job was uh, vice president of par product marketing for Honeywell's navigation business. And then after I retired from there, I came to work at uh, Hennepin Technical College. So Chris, you wanna talk a little bit about your background? Absolutely, my name is Chris Reinecke and my undergraduate degree was in accounting. So after graduating from college, I became a CPA and I worked for KPMG, which is a large accounting firm. Um, I worked in our Los Angeles office and from uh, starting out in public accounting, then I worked for um, a, a smaller business that went public. So I, my, my focus has been on the accounting and finance end of things and was involved in the public offering um, for a real estate company in California. And then after that, I re received my MBA and then went to work for Johnson & Johnson, um, which is a large healthcare company where I worked in new business development and supporting and supported from a finance perspective, the sales and marketing area. Um, and after that, then I've been teaching at Hennepin Technical College now for over 18 years in both the accounting as, as well as our business program. Thanks, Chris. That was some stuff I didn't know. <laughs> I learned some things about you too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, first of all, for everybody that's here, um, I, we appreciate your being here. And if you're considering college, I want to congratulate you on that. I, I'm a big believer uh, in education. I, I think it gives us a chance to get exposed to new ideas and new cultures and new people. And it, it just makes us better, better in business and, and better in life. But in addition to that, and what I want to talk about on this chart a little bit, is that it's also just a great investment from a business perspective. And you can see here, these numbers are from the 2010 census. Um, the median income for a high school graduate is $42,000 a year roughly. And a median income for a graduate with an associate degree like we offer at Hennepin Technical College is about $10,000 higher than that. 
So from a business perspective, we're thinking about, okay, would I make, would I make an investment and a, a, a business degree, a 60 credit business degree tuition would be roughly $12,000 plus maybe another couple thousand for books. So would I invest $14,000 over a two year period to uh, get an extra $10,000 a year for the rest of my working life. So that's just a little over a year pay, payback period uh, and then $10,000 a year for the rest of your life. A great investment. And we would all, we would all take that deal. So great for, your, for yourself as a person, but also a great investment just from your future earning potential. And an associate degree builds toward as we'll talk later, a bachelor's degree if you decide to go on, and then you have just a sort of unlimited potential for, for future income. So a great investment, and I congratulate you all for thinking about it. Let me talk a little bit about our students here at HTC. So we have about 250 students in our business program, mostly working adults. So you can see that 90% of our students are part-time students. So we have we have a few that are you know, maybe they, they come out of high school or they're ready to, they don't have a job right now or what, however they're going to go full time. But most of them are working, have families, and are going to school on a part-time, on a part-time basis. So you'll see later our, our program's really structured for, for a, for a part-time student and have maximum flexibility for people to participate in our program. The other thing that's interesting, I think maybe even more important, is we have a very highly diverse set of students. Um, and you guys have probably also experienced this in your education. You, you learn more from your fellow students than you do from your faculty. Um, you, you get exposed to, you know, all different cultures and, and different ideas. And we have students from all over the world. Uh, and it, it provides a really rich class environment to, uh, to learn from each other and get ideas and, and, and some uh, cultural acumen as you go through the program. I want to stop. I meant to say at the beginning, if you have questions as we go along, type them into the questions or the comments and we'll stop. You know, I'd prefer to have interaction. So if you have a question about something, um, don't, you don't need to wait. Or I don't know, Corey, if they can turn on their microphones or not to just yell out. But um, how, however it is, if you want to stop us to ask a question, please feel free to do that. Otherwise, you'll also be able to ask at the end. Um, for, so for we have 250 students and if we asked everybody, we'd probably get 250 different ideas about why they decided to continue with their education. But they kind of get into four, I think, of general categories and see if, see if maybe one of these fits for what you're thinking about. Um, first, they, they want to learn, maybe they want to learn a, a, career, uh, a new skill to start a new career. So there, we have students that are in a job, maybe it's not their favorite place to be there they don't mean maybe they aren't being fulfilled by the company or the career they're in or they have a passion for some other different thing you know they're they're doing manufacturing but they always wanted to be in sales or um, they, they just looking for a career change and so they come to us to help develop some new some new skills another set of people Ha they love where they're at. They're, maybe they're working, we have people working like for Boston Scientific or in the healthcare industry. They have a huge passion for that, but they need some education to get to the next level, the next supervisory level. So, so they come, they're working in a job, they just want to progress with the company that they're with, and so they come to us for that. Some students have an ambition to get a four-year degree, and they come to us for the first two years, and I'll show you some so, you know some degrees that are specifically designed for that, but there it's a you know more affordable approach to come to a, a Hennepin Tech or a, or or another community college to get your first two years and then go on to a to a four years to a four year school, and then we have a set of students um, that really what their passion is to start their own business. They have something they're passionate about. They have a skill that they really uh, that they're something they're really good at. And they, but they, they want to go out on their own and start their own business. So they might know their skill, but they might need some business, some business skills to, uh, to help them get started. So they come to us to get those kinds of skills. So what kind of jobs are we, are we, uh, are we targeting? Um, generally, the, the kind of jobs we're looking for 
or, or that our students go and get right after they graduate would be entry level supervisors. So maybe they're working a factory and they, they want to be a factory supervisor or a retail store manager or a sales manager. So we have students that um, uh, we have a student that's a product manager for Marvin Windows. We have a student that's a factory supervisor it, that graduated and became a factory supervisor in healthcare. Um, I, I, I just met with a student this week that's an associate at a small marketing company. It's a two person digital marketing company and they're an associate there. Retail managers, we ha I have a sales, we have a student that graduated and now is in, you know, in the sales program with Hirschfield Paints. Um, uh, I have written one other one down here. Oh, of course, the, the most obvious. We have several students that have gone off then and started their own business. In fact, I was reading an article, I think it was in the Pioneer Press, about so how people in the Twin Cities can support minority businesses. And one of our students' clothing stores was, was listed in, uh, in that article. So we have a variety of students' business, a very diverse background, a very broad set of job opportunities. But in general, you can see the kinds of jobs that you might think about and salaries in the fifty to seventy thousand dollar range for sort of first line supervisors. So here's the degrees that we have, and they're all they're all uh, set up around those kinds of jobs. So we have AAS means Associate of Applied Science. That's a that's a technical degree with with mostly technical programs and just fifteen credits of general education. So a management. A management AAS degree if you're interested in supervisory uh, kinds of positions, uh, a marketing and sales if you're if you're interested like I have a passion in marketing and sales if if those are your and Chris has background in marketing and sales if you're interested in in going up a uh, developing a career in marketing and sales we have a AAS degree for that we have a special uh, degree focused on people who want to start businesses so so if that's your if that's your passion then we have an entrepreneurship AAS and, and you will learn all the basic business skills you need to start a business. And then the last one on the list of degrees is this business transfer pathway that I talked a little bit about before. Uh, that degree is specifically designed to be the first two years of a four-year degree. And the state legislature has mandated that any of the Min State schools, Minnesota State schools, that this, this is most of the schools in the state, except for the University of Minnesota, um, have to accept that degree as the first two year degree. So you can, you can take 60 credits here and another 60 credits at Metro State or Mankato or St. Cloud, uh, another school and finish up with a, with a bachelor's degree, uh, a very affordable approach. So if, that's, if you're interested and you know you wanna go on to a four year degree, that's a great approach to do. Um, the other thing we have are these occupational certificates. So we have students that maybe are coming back to school or maybe going to college for the first time and think, you know, I don't really want to commit to a 60 credit sort of two year degree. That sounds like too much for me. What I like to do is start with something smaller. So we have these occupational certificates that are 16 credit or 19 credit awards that you can go get and they build toward a 60 credit degree so you don't you're, you're not doing anything twice but if you just want to start smaller and just spend a semester or some or a little bit over a semester to get a certificate you can you can come to Hennepin Tech and get those skills and move on I've had students for example I, I, I had a call from a, a super value grocery store manager and he had he had a employee that was great and they wanted to make this person the head of one of the departments in the store, but they needed some supervisory background and some, some basic management skills. They didn't want to take two years to get this done. So we were able to ha let them take the supervisory management certificate to get the basic skills they needed then to move on to their career. And they can always come back to get more education as they move up in their, in their career. Hey Jeff, it looks like you have a question. Oh, good. Um, can you can you read it to me? Yep. So I so, don't have to. Uh, it says because you cater to part time students, are most of your classes in the evening? All of our class. Excellent question because it fits right with this slide. Um, all of our classes are online, so we have a hundred percent online 
online program. We, the, we, did, we used to have all of the classes that we met were in the evenings, but our students really prefer the online format. So we've gone in the last year or so to 100% online format. Did that, did that answer the question? The other things, as long as I'm talking about the flexibility for part-time students, um, the other things we have that help that situation is you can start our program in any semester. So you, you suddenly take a notion in the summer to start, you can start on a degree program at HDC in the summer, in the spring or the fall. Any semester that you wanna start, you can start. And we set up our cl classes. There's some prerequisites for reading and math skills. So you have to have basic high school reading and math skills. And if you don't have those, we have some classes you can take to get those skills. But if you have the basic reading and math skills, you can take any of our courses in any order. So if somebody says, gosh, I would just like to come in and take the entrepreneurship class, they can do that. Or I just wanna come in and take one of Chris's sales classes to get some more sales skills. You, you can do that and you don't have, there's not a set order of classes you need to take. Um, you set the pace, you set the classes, you take what you're interested in. The other part uh, of our program structure is that our courses are, are set to really develop the skills you need for employability. We cover theory. We we know business theory and 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 we cover that. But it's that. But the theory of business is not our focus. The actual business acumen and the skills that you need to actually be successful in your job today. That's the focus that um, that we have. And the these the the these uh, notions, these ideas of what's important, come from a business advisory committee that we have. So local business people come together and we do it twice a year and they advise us and they they're people who are out in business and hiring people and they they advise us on what skills they want for their employees and these are the things and, and then we focus on teaching them the skills uh, that they really need to be successful in their career any more questions Corey or did I get everything for those I'm good thank you okay I want to spend it. We or Chris and I wanted to spend a little time um, talking to give you a notion of okay, what does it mean to have classes that focus on skills and real world um, activities that you need to be successful? So, we're going to talk, Chris is going to talk about a couple of her classes, and I'm going to talk about uh, entrepreneurship class. So, this is one of USN 1510 is our entrepreneurship class, and it's set up with a semester long project where students actually go and create a startup business plan that they could take and start their business tomorrow. So that's the notion of this class. And we start with the, what's, what's the vision? What are, what are students, we explore a little bit about, you know, what are you passionate about? What, how do you want to spend, what do you want to spend your life doing? What, you know, what kind of things do you like to do? Where do you want to go? And once they have a vision of kind of where, what industry, what kinds of things they'd like to work on, then we spend some time doing research. What's the industry look like? What's the market look like? We develop business models. How could we make a uh, how could we make a business based on sort of the available resources we have that that would be viable place to start? And then we end the semester with a real startup business with a real startup business plan. And I I put some examples from from uh, last time we ran the class of businesses that students have. Uh, chosen to create their startup plan for. And you'll see they're, they're kind of based what I call, some of them are sort of skill based. So we have students from, and this is from our technical college where that are experts in plumbing or, or carpentry and, and they create business plans for, for to be, have their own plumbing business or construction business. Um, we have students who are maybe passionate about photography. So they create a, a business plan to make a living on on photography or organic farming. So those kinds of things. We also have students who are interested in what, what we call social entrepreneurship, which, which means social entrepreneurship, if you're not familiar with that term, is using business practices. And, and you'll hear, I think, more about this from, from Buffy because she's actually doing it. But it's using business practices to solve some social problems. So for example, uh, we have somebody develop a plan for a mobile grocery business to bring groceries to uh, grocery shopping 
to places in the city where they're not grocery stores that are close and people don't have good transportation. So they, they're solving, they're creating a business using business principles, um, but they're doing it to solve some business problem. So this, this is all set. Our entrepreneurship program is not about the theory of entrepreneurship. It's about actually creating a business plan that you could go out and start after you finish your class. Okay, Chris. Thank you. So another class that I teach is our marketing applications course. And Jake or Jeff, you did a great job kind of explain how we get into the business and actually try to use skills versus just the theory of it. Um, and so during this class, um, the student has a number of assignments. You can see them listed there, projects one through 10. But it gives the student an opportunity to work with a business. So they're encouraged to find a smaller business that, they, that they're already familiar with or that they're comfortable to, to go into the business and get to know somebody. Um, involved with running the company to, to help them and work with them to, de to develop a marketing plan. So you're actually at the end of the semester, you've developed a marketing plan for the business. Um, and, you know, we walk through each step of the, the way they turn things, you, the students will turn in um, their work as they go, which gives the student an opportunity for feedback along the way to really help um, them to learn and to focus focus on um, you know what their end result is and so they learn about you know the environmental factors that are, um, are need to be considered when developing a marketing plan the strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats for the business that they're involved in um, so they're actually looking at it for a specific specific business and you know we encourage them to find some a business that's a little bit smaller so it's easier to kind of really focus in on a local market versus trying to take on something too large, um, you know, like a, a Best Buy or something where it's, you know, the whole country. Um, and there's so many different factors that come into play when you can localize it to something smaller. Um, it makes it easier to kind of get your um, arms around all the different facets of it. So those are the steps. And then Jeff, if you share the next slide, I can show you some examples of some of the different um, companies. So you may or may not be familiar with any of these, but these are just kind of a, a sampling of companies that students have chose to work with this semester. Sometimes students choose the, the company they're employed by, which is a great opportunity for them to get noticed within their company or, and just show the owners of the company that they're very motivated to, to learn more and take on more responsibility and they're trying to produce something of value that can be used for the company. Um, so these are uh, just a sampling of the types of businesses. So everything from real estate, you can see um, dog accessory type of a business to, um, you know, to nutritional impact nutrition it's a company that has shakes and other nutritional things that they offer in a retail store where customers come in to, to purchase things. So um, it gives the students to find businesses maybe that they have an interest in or perhaps down the road they plan to, to move into Jeff's class to be um, an entrepreneur. This can help them to develop even a better business plan when they get to that class. Um, and then another class, Jeff, if you want to show the next slide. Um, we have a class called professional development. And so in this class, the students actually try to um, figure out something that they want to train the rest of the class on. So there's a lot of elements in going through training. And so it makes the students um, kind of think about how how they would teach something to other people. Um, so it's a hands-on assignment that they're going to think through, again, which will help them when they're um, actually in a job trying to do something similar. So in this case, they're, they're preparing a 20-minute training se um, session for an element um, that they want to train the class on. And they're going to teach the 
uh, the class a skill that they can use to um, improve their success in the marketplace. So uh, the students have a few different examples that are that are mentioned here from mentoring skills, um, how they might look for a job. And so maybe that helps other students in the class if they're in the job search mode. Um, different, you know, there's a lot of different ways to go about that. Um, and then the students have to come up with visual aids that they can use during their presentation to the other students. And then also be prepared to have an activity that the students will actually do during their 20 minute presentation. And again, it's kind of a fun, creative way. And Jeff said, now we are online. So it gives students a chance to do things a little bit differently. Um, you know, we do use Zoom or the students will record things for other students to view. Um, and it's, that's kind of realistic, especially with COVID, with what's going on in the marketplace right now. There's a lot of new ways that um, people within a company can train each other. And we do it with the, in Hennepin Tech as well as faculty. Um, actually, Jeff and I have a training session later this afternoon um, with other faculty where we help each other learn and grow to become better instructors. And so over, um, uh, the, and Zoom is a technology that we use most often um, at our college and we give students an opportunity to, you know, use their skills to present information to each other and to us as instructors. Okay, so Jeff, okay. I'll turn it back to you for the next slide. Okay. Okay, so we're just going to wrap up here with, with kind of a summary of some of the things that we, we like to make sure we've emphasized about Hennepin Technical College's program. First one, and we didn't mention this, but we, Hennepin Technical College is, a, is an accredited business school. This accreditation council for business schools and programs is the global accreditation body for, for business schools. And, and we're a fully accredited business school, which, and what that means for students is you can go anywhere in the world and people will recognize your degree because it's a fully accredited uh, business business college degree. So Chris, I think you were going to start. Sure. Um, and, and Jeff mentioned this a bit. Um, our first bullet point there is a schedule that fits your life. So as he mentioned, all of our classes now are offered online. Um, and that works well for students. You, you can um, students can find what, a schedule that works for them. There's obviously due dates that work has to be turned in by, um, but it really allows students, if weekends are better, late nights, you know, to get to spend time on the class, they can do that. And we do a lot of different things in those online classes um, from presentations by us. Um, there's videos that we share with our students on the topics that we're learning about. Um, so there's a lot of interaction that can still happen in that setting. Um, our fourth bullet point there is our small class sizes. You know, so our classes are never larger than 27 students. And so as instructors, we are there um, it, really 24-7 20, for the most part. You know, I know we all work out of our house now, so I'm always near my computer. So I try to respond back to students almost immediately when questions came in. That can't always be the case, but many times that is just how it works out um, because of technology that we're able to really be there for our students. Um, we can have Zoom appointments to talk about material we're covering in the class, about careers that students are thinking about uh, undertaking if they have questions, we're here to help and support. And because Jeff and I teach most of the business classes, students really get to know their instructors. I mean, it's a very personal program at HTC and a relationship definitely um, is, is created from having multiple opportunities of working together. Um, and oh, and the, oh, one other point I'll just say too, if some of you are high school students, um, you know, some of our certificates as a PSEO student too, you could come to Hennepin Tech to take some of our classes. You could even com fully complete a certificate as a high school student, which could help you get a very nice job either right out of high school or even while you're in high school. And then you can always come back to Hennepin Tech and complete one of our two-year degrees. Um, and you've saved 
yourself some money by doing some of the credits while you're in high school. Um, and if anybody, Jeff will show our, our, share our emails at the end. Um, so feel free to reach out if there's any questions or any other things that you'd have on that. Well, I see one question just came in here about if the instruction is synchronous. For everything, um, um, actually, I'll let Jeff speak for himself, but everything that I do is asynchronous. So students, I do a lot of recordings and videos, but they can watch it when it works for them. Um, but then we'll have appointments or I'll have drop-in time on Zoom where students can come in and, and um, you know, we might be working on something, but it's never required. So students have a lot of flexibility um, as far as their time goes. So there's no time that I require them to be um, online. And Jeff, I don't know. Yeah, that's you. the same with me. My classes are all asynchronous. I have students, students vary in their, how comfortable they are with, with online classes. Um, and so I have students who actually like to meet with me once a week. And so we set up a time and we do a Zoom once a week to make sure they understand the assignment and ask any questions about the material. And uh, other students um, would just like to be on their own. <laughs> and, and then and they, you know, they're working through at their own pace. And I have students that work very fast through the, you know, work ahead and go through the programs fast. So all the students are different but you can have as much interaction with your instructors as you want. One, I'll say as much or as little as you want. One other thing I, I'm, Chris, were you done? I didn't mean to I, I, No, that okay. was my end. So the, the last thing I, the, one other thing I wanted to mention is we are all, we are focused on employability and growing your career. That's what we're all about. So our classes are focused on real, real skills you need to be employable and get a job and our program is set so that it's transferable to your to other men state schools so you can come and you know get a degree start your work and then say now I, okay now to get to the next level I want to go get a four year degree and you'll be able to apply what you've learned here uh, to another men state school so employability and transferability are our top of our list of things that we're thinking about Okay, and if, oh, I was going to show you the, here's our email, so anybody's welcome to, to contact uh, Chris or I anytime, and we'd be happy to, you know, sit down with you and talk about what your education goals are and how we could help. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much, Jeff and Chris. Um, and a lot of what was uh, presented about what we do at Hennepin Tech as far as your entrepreneurship or your opportunities um, I thought it would be a great connection to our guest speaker today, and I'm super excited to hear uh, her story because she's the CEO and Chief Inspiration Officer, which I love that title of Rock What You Got. Um, but we, I, I just want to know the story, you know, why, uh, you know, you chose to do this, all, all this great, the great work you do. So I'll let you introduce yourself and you can be the star. And uh, Jeff, can we have you um, stop presenting so we can make the screen a little bit bigger? And we'll do it that way. Thank um, you. Thanks, Corey, for inviting me. Thanks, everybody. And congratulations for taking an opportunity to think about your career and, and using education to do it. I, I haven't figured it out yet. I always thought if I could just get somebody to pay me to go to school forever, that would be my top job. Um, I have several degrees and um, I just enjoy learning. I think there's so many great things to do there. So congratulations on that and thanks for having me. Uh, you know, so here's, here's my story and I don't know everybody who's on where you're at in your career and what you're looking for, but um, you always start one way and the world kind of throws some things at you and you have this opportunity to actually pivot and switch. And I would say this, always keep your, your mind and your eyes open for different things. I'm a recovering banker who worked in the financial services industry forever, just like climb the corporate ladder. And at that time, that was exactly what I needed. I learned a ton about how to run a business and the financial aspects of doing that. It was um, incredibly fun. I got to travel. I get to work with some of the top companies in the country, some of the, the biggest financial services companies, and consult for them, and it was a lot of fun. And I also learned a lot about myself and what I really wanted to do. 
I am a server of others. And that climbing the corporate ladder always gave me the opportunity to do that. In the back of my mind, I always felt like what I was doing mattered and the people that I served were both my customers and the team that I was building. Uh, it's the people that make me great. My team right now would just, I, I am nothing without them. And um, I, I think as you're, you're considering your world and what you're really great at, you should follow some of those, those paths that, that drop in there and give yourself an opportunity to explore a lot more. So I got on my entrepreneurial journey knowing zero about how to start a business or what small businesses went through. And just because, you know, when you know nothing, you think you know everything, um, you go out and you, you try to find something. that I actually started my entrepreneurial journey as a franchisee. And I, um, the franchise that I owned was a, um, I was an area developer, which basically means you own multiple franchises. Your goal is to build other franchisees. And um, I did some small business coaching. So I'm the avid coach franchise in town and for eight years. And I coached other business owners while not knowing anything about being a business owner. And so that was one of the, the, the little paths in the journey. I'm really great at building businesses, but I didn't realize how different it is to do and do it for yourself. It is so for so when you're you're exploring your own world, what matters to you, how you want to see yourself, when you when you're introspective that way, you can see where you're really great. And um, I was really great at helping other people make money. It was very hard to shift into something that provided it for me, and so. That, that's a, both a mental and also a educational shift in terms of what it takes to be an entrepreneur. Uh, a lot of the skills that I learned in the traditional business world work great for this, but mostly entrepreneur, being an entrepreneurial mind requires you to be very, very pliable. Um, you also have to check your risk tolerance. Um, it's, it's very unusual for people to talk about it that way, but being an entrepreneur is likely one of the riskiest things you will ever do in your life. Um, you have a lot of people who rely on you, especially as you start getting your own employees. They are, um, you know, I know lots of people use family. That isn't really the true as much as, as your, their reliance on you is significant for their families. And so I, um, the business coaching thing was great for a long time. I actually sold my practice. So this is the beauty of owning your own business. You can buy and sell your, your own stuff as you grow it. So I sold my business coaching practice to one of my business coaches who's still out there um, coaching. He actually also runs um, and certifies veteran owned businesses. His name is Paul Mara. If you ever run into him, he's awesome. And, um, but I, I will say I learned a, a significant amount about what I wanted to do next and how I wanted to grow my business. And so social entrepreneurship was something that's, that ended up in my wheelhouse right from the very start. My first, my first client was Finnegan's, which is Finnegan's Irish Amber, the beer company, Finnegan's Brew Company. Jackie Berglund was my freshman orientation leader at Augsburg, and she and I have been friends forever. I was her business coach for six years, and she's one of the first quintessential social entrepreneurs. If you don't know her story, you should uh, get out online and, and take a look. It's, it's very phenomenal. Uh, they give 100% of their profits away to support uh, food insecurities and have their own brewery downtown now. I was a part of that and, and um, helping make that be a reality for her. And so what is a social enterprise? I know uh, Jeffrey was explaining it a little bit. The way I like to say it is you're very, very mission driven, but you're not a nonprofit. You're not looking to grow something that's that's a nonprofit, but you you have this huge desire to make a change in something that's going on in the world that really matters to you, and that's just that social contract that you have with your business and the ecosystem that you're supporting. And here's the beauty of this: it can be anything. There's so many fabulous social entrepreneurs here in the Twin Cities, especially. I think. This, this uh, 
community is sort of way ahead of the game in terms of of being able to build that. And here's the beauty, as you're thinking about your education and what you wanna do, you can build your own, but you can go and work for some of these companies too. I mean, there are, there are large and small, Sunrise Banks is, is one of the, the larger um, organizations in town. They're a certified B Corp, and, and I'm happy to explain a little bit about that. That's um, kind of a really, it's a social benefit company. It's a, it basically means you've agreed to put mission ahead of profit. And it allows your board to be able to understand that you might make business decisions based on the mission that you're driving and not necessarily shareholder equity or shareholder returns. And you know, as you go into your business classes, there'll be conversations about that. What are we doing maximizing our shareholder equity? That isn't what you do when you own a social enterprise. You hope that you get a chance to, to fill your own, your own bank account too as part of this, but it's, that's not why you do it. Um, for us at Rock What You Got, uh, we, are, we are dedicated to gender equality. And for us, we believe that when we give voice to women, and for us that also means um, non-binary, transgender women, their voices start to equalize them. Um, it, that, and we've, so we put them on stage, as you can see behind me. I have one of our stages. Um, we do, and um, we have a number of different um, events, let's just call them, that we work on. The Twin Cities Women's Expo, which I purchased to get into this business in the first place, um, is it now more of a, um, if we can have it again, this is, uh, I'll talk a little bit about how COVID has changed everything, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, we just, we just felt that there was, there was a lot more that women were multidimensional and that we started emphasize the stage piece, like their voice, either their business sense or their, their entered, you know, their musicians or theater artists or, um, just really smart in what they do. So that's what we do. We, we continue to find opportunities to elevate voices uh, and we support financially a number of organizations in town that are dedicated to women and family. And those range anywhere between um, domestic violence and um, sex trafficking to uh, you know, supporting organizations and other small businesses like the Black Women's Wealth Alliance, which is also a social enterprise and some um, groups to ensure that more women can start businesses and that their products are being seen. So we have, as part of all of our, oh, most of our events, we have um, an opportunity for shopping experience or other kinds of, of avenues with that. So um, we've given to more than two dozen local organizations that of Mount, we're part of what's called the Minnesota Keystone Program, which is a, a dedicated group from the biggest corporations in town like Target to give at least 5% of your, your um, net profits away. And uh, we're well over 20% uh, each year in terms of what, what we give. And so that is, that's kind of the journey I've had. I'm, I sort of feel like I owned a, I mean, if you, you, you have a little bit of a, creative spark. You can do a whole lot of things. I've owned a co-working space. I, we owned the second one in town. Um, was called Work Around. We closed it right before the pandemic hit, um, just for the changing nature of co-working spaces. And um, I also, we also owned something called We Spark Growth, which is a business outsourcing company. So I think the greatest thing is, and, and I still have a couple of clients that are, we do what's called fractional CFO work. What you can kind of consider is there that the world is sort of endless when it comes to being an entrepreneur, right? Anything you think, especially in a social enterprise, what you do doesn't matter. That's how you make the money to ensure that you can create this social world for yourself and it and express that through it. And so um, one of the quotes I always say Jackie told me is, you know, you she was, been, she was given a gift and that gift was the capacity to earn. Your business is that capacity, how you build it, what it does, and just thinking about it in terms of true business um, acumen, 
allows you to earn as much money as possible, that money then can go to serve your mission. And it's really one of the most beautiful things uh, that you can ever do for yourself and for um, the mission that you have is to to kind of craft your your business to do more than one thing. So that is the big thing. COVID, I, I will tell you, being an entrepreneur has been very, very hard for just about every single person, unless you are lucky enough to be in the business of healthcare, um, creating stuff for healthcare, or your name is Best Buy or Target. <laughs> in which case, you're doing fantastic in this thing. Um, I'm part of an organization uh, called uh, Maniva and Neva. It's the National Independent Venues Association. If you haven't heard of them, we're, we're technically considered promoters um, in the music and, and um, sort of performance world, festival organizers. And so we have been effectively closed since March of last year and um, by governor's orders. And so almost all of us have had to um, you know, pivot and as much as we've hated that word a lot, um, some are easier than others. If you're First Avenue, um, so Dana Frank is, if you guys, just local people that you might wanna learn more about, Dana Frank is the owner of First Avenue, which includes five, I think, other venues. Um, the Palace and the Fitzgerald and and um, Turf Club, I think. And uh, in any case, uh, she was instrumental in getting this organization started. And you know, one of the things you get to learn when you're a small business owner too is how to lobby your congressional leaders. And so that's a, I mean, I think up until now I hadn't had a lot of experience doing that. Um, but you have to advocate for yourself if you or you just will be left behind. And so getting involved. Um, I am on the chamber, Minneapolis Chamber Board, which is how Corey got me. I'm on the executive board of the Minneapolis Regional Chamber. But I, even then, I'd never, and the Small Business Committee, I've chaired that for a while. Um, I've never really realized how important it was for you to learn the skills of having conversations with and advocating for your own business. And what's important because other people are doing it around you. And if it's in, if it's against you, you're, you're definitely going to be on the sidelines wondering what happened. And so um, the, you know, being a part of that um, group has been really both fulfilling and also a very tragic. There's a lot of people out there, businesses have closed in this town in record numbers, lots of them restaurants, cause they're, they're, they're just very, um, capital intensive for all practical purposes. So when you're learning how to build a business a plan and you're sort of thinking about your capital expenditures and your profit margins, you know, uh, in all of these things, even the work we do, the, the margins are really thin. The, the capital that's required to do a festival, for instance, is, is very significant. And it's a kind of a one, a one and done thing and it's a volume driven business. And so that becomes part of your business challenge when you're thinking about, well, how can I make enough money to <laughs> make a difference in the world um, or just in, in terms of feeding my own family, um, understanding your profit margins and how that works. And the outside forces, um, I'm pretty sure none of us expected this kind of outside force, um, but it, it, you do need to make contingencies for things that are completely and totally out of your, your control. And this has been been one of them. So what have we done? Je Jeffrey said she, he worked for Honeywell. Um, actually, we switched a lot of our stuff. We were very fortunate to have a, a relationship with MCN6. It's a community uh, TV station in Northeast Minneapolis. They were going to, uh, they were our sponsor for the Twin Cities Women's Expo, which was supposed to be March of 2020. So we were the first one to cancel. That's two thirds of our income is that event. Um, and we'd already spent all our money for it because it got canceled March 11th. <laughs> so everything was spent and then we returned money to everybody. So last year was kind of a big thing, but MCN6 had, was gonna live stream everything before live streaming was a big thing. 
And we churned that around in two weeks and we did that. Our event was supposed to be March 20, uh, the last weekend of March, 25th and 26th, I think. Um, we ended up doing nine and a half hours of live stream. So kind of the first group to pick that up and that has just led, this is sort of the, the big aha moment in being pliable and a little bit of a, having a high risk tolerance. We just started riding that a little bit. We learned some skills on film development and performances. We had all these relationships with these performers for our live events. And we started putting them on stage. We did some comedy shows before anybody was doing them. Um, to the public, we then shifted to some private performances, one of which we have a giant one on tomorrow for Honeywell <laughs> for their engineering week. Um, we have a big comedy kind of, the, you know, fun thing for them tomorrow with all sorts of big surprises. And so, and we've been doing those to kind of keep the lights on. Um, and, and that also allows for another shift. We are looking at doing um some actual film production we've got uh, three or four tv shows that we're working on and we're also working on some some development in the funeral world um COVID has also shifted how we mourn and people are doing live stream but they're sort of missing the essence of who people are and who they were and so this is something that has lasting effects so we're looking um we're pitching next week to um, the largest senior home company in the country um, to, to talk about, you know, making documentaries for your loved ones. And that includes the live stream of your, uh, of the event. So um, that's, that's our story. We've got a lot of things in the hopper, I think for everybody who's part of this, um, you know, understanding, the fundamentals of business and really applying those as much as possible to your business if you're starting it or if you're gonna go work for somebody else. I say work for another entrepreneur too. I have I got so lucky this last time to find somebody who really believes in our mission too and is just wants to be the second in command. I can't wait to make her in charge. <laughs> so so I there's great opportunity for people to work for another entrepreneur and make their dream come true and then be a part of it, potentially sort of being a part of the ownership group at some time as well. You don't have to do everything from scratch. Um, there's a lot of things out there um, and a lot of people who have the vision, but maybe not the, you know, the technical piece or, or the drive or the, the, what would I say? The perseverance to keep going when things get tough out there which they're gonna, they are, they're gonna continue to. So that's what I have. If any, anybody has any questions, I'm happy to, to answer. Yeah, that's what I was just gonna say, like Jeff, Chris, uh, Chris or the group, do you have anything? I, I had a question when you I'm interested when you you were doing a lot of live events, which I'm interested in those, but and then you shifted you were talking about the event you're doing for Honeywell and you got live streaming and now you got filmmaking and all kinds of things. Where do you go to get those extra skills you need? You know, you have to find really great partners who are also looking for um, collaboration. It, finding collaborative people in the small business world is really tough. Entrepreneurs, I, I coached well over 350 entrepreneurs when I was a business coach. And they're very tight with their, they think they have the, 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 where, the, the one thing, like the idea, and they don't want to share it with anybody. I'm just going to tell you guys right now, that is not how it works. <laughs> just because somebody has an idea doesn't mean they can make it to fruition. And so I am very much a, a huge fan of just reaching out and finding collaborators. So for us, that's MCN6. There's a gentleman over there who's also a small business owner. He owns a company called Implex. They do quick cast. They're like the largest like um, pay-per-view, <laughs> something that the, the original virtual, right? Pay-per-view um, for large corporations and, and all sorts of things. And they've been teaching us stuff. And so then as an entrepreneur, even though we didn't have any revenue, this is all part of investing in your company. I went out and found people. So my current team, has experience in filmmaking, which is a little different than virtual. 
and we just used our live our live stage performance components to produce the actual performance piece. That that doesn't actually change. It doesn't matter if it's in person or if it's virtual. Um, you know, the crew. There's there's you need you know crew, sound engineers, filmmakers. If you do it in person, you still need technical crews. Uh, roadies, all the people that put everything together and load it up. Um, we are going to do one, we have on the books one live event for sure, provided that the governor opens up a little bit more. We did test it out in the pandemic last year. It's called the Pay Gap Comedy and Music Festival. It will be at the State Fair again. It's the last weekend in September. Um, it's two days of, you know, stand up um uh sketch comedy music and it's all women and it's all local and so it'll be a, a real fun and then there'll be a it, like always there'll be a marketplace it's in the west end market but it's it's hard and and i would say i mean i love the the the, the live music independent music in this town is really great the people who run those businesses i'm just just a little pitch for them i mean they're closed and hurting. So find ways to support them if you can. Um, and get back out there when you can again too. Um, we're working with Pride too, potentially, to do something with them. Um, and that's where you get the collaborations. Just find other people doing stuff that you want to do and find a way to support them and find see where there's some synergies. Thanks. Yeah, any other questions? Those are all great. And this, this, it got me thinking, like, I wonder how Hennepin Tech can find a way to, to collab with you potentially on something. We are totally looking at I, Some of it's in the, the documentary space. There's We have a food show we're working on right now. Some of it's just one. Here's the social enterprise piece of this. Always see if it's mission driven. We ask mm -hmm. our question every single time we decide we're shifting to something. We ask ourselves, are we still mission driven? Our mission is kind of big, I mean, broad in, in gender equality, but are we placing women on stage? Are we celebrating their, their expertise and their knowledge and their experiences? It doesn't have to be all in, it just needs to be that we're thinking about them first. So even in the funeral piece, they're for everybody, but the crew, um, the directors, the writers, the editors, the people that are behind the scenes in the world of film, women typically do not get the big jobs for those. They're very much, it's very much a man's world. And in the Twin Cities, there is a group of highly skilled, you know, filmmakers. And um, it doesn't matter what it is you do. Just so, I just tell everybody, just, it doesn't meet your mission. Are you still mission driven? then how you make your money doesn't matter. It's true. That's so true. Thank you so much for that. Like, really, I I appreciate it because I, I, when I was reading, just going through, uh, like, your LinkedIn that they sent me and just some info, and I was like, oh. <laughs> well, you know? there is a side note to being an entrepreneur, and that is um, you can certainly be in too many things. <laughs> <laughs> Focus is definitely a, a challenge for for a lot of us, or the or the conversely, you get too caught up in just the the safety of something that you forget that you're just not any different than any other business. You have to keep growing, whatever that means. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean always more revenue. It means innovating. It means staying on top of your customers' needs and, and desires having a, a, a plan in case something happens to you um, and whatever that looks like. Um, there's all sorts of legal things to consider as part of that. And then your business will have longevity and, and legacy. And I think that's what all of us really want in the end. Any other questions before we wrap? Because I know we're getting close to the time and I um, appreciate the 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 hour that we were able to spend with both with all Buffy, uh, Chris, and Jeff, I like again. Thank you again. Um, this was a part of the CTE Career Technical Education Month. This is our final one. Hopefully, we're able to do some uh, creative things like this going forward. Um, this is our first time having a guest speaker, and I thought that was amazing. 
um, an amazing job that you did. Um, and I really appreciate that. So if you are interested in Hennepin Tech, um, you can go to our website, hennepintech.edu. Or if you're interested in any technical education, not even just HTC, but if you're looking to go to any school, there's so many in the in Minnesota. Um, as someone who is not from Minnesota, I experienced this once I moved here. I, I, I moved here and was like, whoa, I never even heard of a technical college. Um, and there's so many spaces for um, minorities and, and, and groups that people can really take advantage of these short-term um, opportunities or these short-term certificates diplomas, degrees, and really make a difference. And if you're a person even interested in the four-year institution still, this may be a great place to start. Um, or if you want to start your own business, this may be a great place to get some info and learn and then go work for someone like Buffy mentioned that also has that experience too and, and just keep gathering info. Um, but again, to wrap this completely, I know it's two. Thank you so much. Hopefully we'll be able to do something like this again. Uh, have a great day. Thanks, Corey. Thank you. Okay. There we go.